All right, fuck it. Let's, I don't know. It's an interesting discussion, but let's talk about the build. It's only been like seven years since I made a talking to the camera sort of YouTube video situation thing. But I guess Cage is going to have to edit it no matter what. Maybe he's even going to include this part. But, but yeah, I, I guess hello, everybody from the, the YouTube world. This is the, the stream person that streams and hasn't done a build diary in like six years. But I found a cool build and we're maybe going to be doing more of these in the future. This is Rise Orb of Bullshit QT. And it is, in fact, a Orb of Storm's character that's had uh, some usage in the past. Uh, quite a while ago now, really. But uh, GGG promptly nerfed it over and over again. And a lot of people moved away from the character. Many people playing it as, a, as crit, as Inquisitor. Uh, I think there were some like weird necromancer builds that people were playing it as well with. But I've been looking for a raider to play for the longest time because I wanted to build for the gauntlet. And I, so I decided to finally test it out. And uh, man, raider is really nice and the character is pretty interesting. So let's talk about it. Like I said, it's an Orb of Storms character. So our main setup is going to be Orb of Storms. And we use Tempest Shield to proc it. This being a... Uh, not a build guide, but a video diary. I'll just explain the basics of the build. We use Tempest Shield because it's just the fastest lightning ability in the game. We do need to use the lightning ability to proc the second frequency hit from Orb of Storms because it does hit on its own, but you really want to be spamming a lightning skill uh, to be able to dish out the massive amount of damage, uh, as much damage as you could. And this is where Raider comes in because Raider gets a lot of cast speed. You get that uh, onslaught with the onslaught effect and then more onslaught effect. And another thing about this one is that we need to stand around I'm not up to in one spot you. for substantial amounts of time. You can hear my character really spazzing out over there. And uh, yeah, we're standing around a lot. And Raider is just really, really, really freaking tanky. Uh, obviously, you get the immunity to ailments. You get uh, less accuracy. You get a lot of dodge and spell dodge by default right now. With really random gear that I have at level 85, I have 55 spell dodge and 55 dodge. But uh, what's Raider the best at is the evasion part of it. You can really stand around for very long periods of time among... Uh, extremely dangerous mobs. I don't know. Let's go to foothills because delirium is pretty cool. And you just don't really get hit. You know? Um, yeah, you just don't really get hit. This is with potions active. I mean, I haven't been hit yet once. This is without potions. Still not hit. Finally, something hit me. Okay, there we go. Without pots, they're hitting me a little bit more, right? But with the potion up, really? It's nothing's ever really hitting me. And this is obviously with Wind Dancer as well. So the mobs do have a higher chance of hitting me and a lower chance of hitting me once they do hit me for 20% less damage. So that just works extremely well. I thought the build's going to have problems against things like Ultimatum because you're just standing around for very long uh, periods of time. I'm sure Cage is uh, putting in some footage into the video right now of me fighting some sort of Ultimatum. No, I don't think I will. And, uh, yeah, you can just face tank pretty much all of it. Raider is just very, very powerful uh, when it comes to that sort of thing. So, again, this being a build diary, uh, let's talk other ascendancies. So, things that people naturally lean towards, as this is an Archmage character. I guess I forgot about mentioning that. Uh, many people are going to be thinking Hierophant or uh, Hierophant or also Hierophant. Uh, we don't need that. The skill tree is very good because of mana on the right side of the tree due to just a lot of these really good mana flask nodes. Uh, makes it so that traveling here is not that big of a deal. And unfortunately, for higher fence sake, even though you do have divine guidance and you do have the ailment immunity, and it has increased AoE, which is really nice, and it has a very comfortable leech, uh, pretty much all of these things are just acquirable with gear. Uh, you can just straight up get them, right? Uh, you already have the ailment avoidance. You can get a little bit of AoE uh, either on your tree or maybe using an unnatural instinct. Um, and it's not really that big of a deal. It's just a little bit more comfort of life because you do have to uh, yeah, stand around and stay in the area of the Orb of Storms to deal damage. And then, uh, yeah, the extra HP doesn't really balance out against 
just the amount of shit that you get with Raider. And the other natural thought, I mean, there's other classes, but if you want to play those, you're pretty much wrong. Uh, <laughs> it's just worse. It's just, you're not wrong, but it's just worse. The other one is Elementalist, which I think is a very good choice. You get a lot of AoE uh, with Heart of Destruction. It's a lot of damage. The build needs multipliers because your flat damage due to Archmage is really high and you don't get that much increased damage. Obviously, uh, the footage that you're probably seeing is uh, without me having a uh, Awakener crown. So I have even less uh, increased damage. But eventually, that's going to go up and so multipliers are going to be super duper impactful for the build. And then there's also gem stuff. I mean, for our main setup, if you are actually looking to replicate this build, and this should answer some frequently asked questions, that I keep getting asked about them all the time. Uh, for our main setups, it's Orbis Storms, Control Destruction, Lightning Penetration, Archmage, Chain, and Elemental Focus. And so there's probably a couple questions when it comes to this. Uh, control Destruction, how do we get Elemental Overload up? You're, we're hitting a lot. We're hitting many times a second. I think currently I'm hitting like 13 times a second. Um, but you're going to need a little bit of crit. Light of Divinity, the 1% that you get off of this with the crit based off of Orb of Storms is enough, I found. But you might want to get a little bit more. But it would it would be enough if you uh, put in some effort into your gear. The other question, I guess, is Elemental Focus. Oh, that's a question that I'm going to answer later. Uh, chain. Why do we use Chain? Well... Orb of Storms has an interesting mechanic to it where a lot of people think that you do need to be in the bubble to be able to... And the mobs need to be inside of the bubble to be able to deal damage. But that's not exactly true. Because with Orb of Storms, the zaps from the Orb of Storms itself are granted from the position of your character as well. So if I am over here and I stand here and those mobs are coming, I can't hit them unless they get inside of the AoE of the Orb of Storms, right? And then it's naturally going to hit them and I'm going to be hitting them as well. But because the range is based off of your character, I can stand away from the Orb of Storms and still hit the mobs. So essentially any AoE that we get within the Orb of Storms not only increases its own AoE, but it also doubles your AoE through the positioning of your character. And that makes the clear a lot nicer. But why we're talking about Chain is because chain just gives a lot of of clear. I don't know if Cage is showing this footage or footage from the map, but you can see things getting zapped around and uh, generally bouncing and being really nice. But Christ, chain doesn't make the damage go up. How single target, man? And that's why we talk about elemental focus, but more importantly uh, than anything else, if I can find it, uh, I think it's over here. Hydrosphere. So Hydrosphere is a super interesting ability that I've been thinking about playing in a build for the longest time. And uh, we're finally here. Hydrosphere allows you to chain or split, rather, your Orb of Storms hit to the Hydrosphere and the boss. And chain allows you to then chain from the Hydrosphere onto the boss, essentially resulting in a double hit against... Uh, well, any enemy, really, but most of the time you're going to be utilizing this on bosses, which completely brings up this entire, brings back this entire ability and why these builds are viable again. Hydrosphere was introduced last league, and I just haven't seen a whole lot of usage of uh, or buff storms at all. Um, but yeah, Hydrosphere doubles your single target. It's the thing that makes it work, and also changes isn't that bad because the damage penalty isn't that high. We don't have a good six link outside of chain. Uh, so there's no reason to like ever swap gems or anything annoying like that. And on top of it, it's 150 mana reservation uh, or mana cost increase, which is super important because any amount of increased mana cost that we have will increase the base damage of our Archmage, which is, yeah, the entirety of our scaling. I, in particular, have the Hydrosphere on an Arcanist brand uh, setup with Conductivity and Blade Blast. Blade Blast is for the... Uh, unnerved debuff, conductivity, just a really good curse, obviously. And uh, yeah, Arcanist brand kind of smoothens things out for, for us. For a little bit, I was using just the Hydrosphere 
with Curse and Hit. But unfortunately, because of the elemental focus and because of the lack of any other abilities, really, uh, we're pretty much not ever able to shock or chill the Hydrosphere. Therefore, it's never proccing the frequency of hits and it's never reapplying. So it's kind of a... Yeah, you get the single target, but it's a one-time use um, a debuff. And I just didn't find that to be too good. Unfortunately, Arcanist Brand does take a little bit before it toggles between all the abilities. But so far, I've been finding it to be worth it. Eventually, I might actually change it. And then some of the other stuff is Fortify. Uh, well, actually, Vigilant Strike is another interesting uh, setup that we might as well talk about since people constantly uh, ask about this. It's Vigilant Strike, Fortify, and Ancestral Call, and you're like, whoa, well, maybe not you, but a lot of people are. Why are you doing the Fortify with the Vigilant Strike? Well, that's because uh, Fortify grants increased Fortify duration, which is just super effective with the recently increased base amount of uh, Fortify time that you get with Vigilant Strike. So even though this isn't a big increase, it's only 33%, maybe you get more with quality? No, you don't. Uh, it actually makes your Fortify last a lot longer. I mean, almost four seconds, depending on what you have. Unfortunately, I only have this on a three link because of the previously mentioned Arcanist brand. What you can also do with the setup is add an Enhance, and that would be super effective. I could also get an Elder Weapon in a three link for the Ancestral Call support and weapon swap for it, which is what some of people, some people do. But for this build in particular, it's not really uh, viable. That's what Dan did for his fire, flame burst, fire burst uh, character. And that's probably what I'm going to do on my fire burst character as well. Honestly, it's just super efficient. But for this build, we still get a substantial duration uh, fortify. It's just really, really comfortable. Another thing that's frequently uh, asked about is the Tempest Shield setup. So Tempest Shield doesn't really have a whole lot of supports. And because we scaled the build with as much cast speed as we possibly can, uh, what do we do? So what I have in Tempest Shield is Tempest Shield, faster casting, obviously, and then Onslaught and Culling Strike. Okay, so people think you use the Onslaught and the Culling Strike for its effects. You get Onslaught with Tempest Shield, but we never hit with Tempest Shield because we never really block. Um, and also, we are a, a raider, so we always have Onslaught anyway. Useless. Same thing for Calling Strike. We never really hit. We never block. So why would you have these? Well, that's because of the quality, which I currently, unfortunately, don't have because SSF. Uh, but eventually, my gems are going to reach level 20. I'm going to flip them, and I'm going to get the quality. The quality is increased attack speed and increased cast speed. Same for Onslaught as it is for Calling Strike. This will result in a 20% cast speed increase in the future, and it's just extremely effective. You should never really drop it as, again, we scale with as much cast speed as we possibly can. Um, yeah, you want that in a pair of Insanity Gloves, preferably, which gives you more attack and cast speed. I got kind of lucky with my gloves. These are pretty good SSF gloves, especially considering that I only use one essence. So that's definitely something to very much keep in mind if you want to buff up your Tempest Shield as much as possible. And then I have for my shield setup, Blood Rage, Sigil of Power, and Flame Dash. So mostly utility. Sigil of Power is kind of questionable right now because it takes me a very long time to actually get it fully buffed. There we go, finally. Uh, I might increase the cost of my Tempest Shield. It is currently level 1. Eventually, if I get better uh, mana, I might just level it up. And therefore, I'm going to be able to get my Sigil of Power fully staged up as soon as possible. But for right now, it does still benefit us greatly because it increases the mana cost of your Orb of Storms, therefore increasing your damage. And it gives you, the Sages give you additional flat damage, which is, it, it's not that big of a deal. And eventually, if you do get the full, um, the full stage buff, then with a level 20 Sigil of Power, you receive 20% less damage from every source. So that part is crucial. If we can get our mana regeneration high enough, Sigil of Power will be immensely useful as uh, just another defensive thing since we're standing around and casting so much. Flame Dash, basic mo mobility skill, nothing too surprising there. And then Blood Rage, unfortunately, is a temporary thing. Um, we need Frenzy Charges, Multiplier, and 
cast speed is the thing that I talked about the most. It's super duper useful, but I don't have a better way of getting frenzy charges. What you really want is minimal frenzy charges on your gear. But what you really want is to un Ashling unveil or, well, you could use a, a uh, cannot reroll prefixes uh, veiled orb and you can try and get minimum frenzy charge through the unveil. And that also now gives you, I think, 4% chance to get a frenzy charge and hit and that would cover you fully when it comes to the uh, Frenzy Charge department, even on bosses, because this build is going to be hitting something like 35, 40 times a second. So 4% is just more than enough. That's really what you want to be looking for in the future. For right now, unfortunately, I have Blood Rage. Eventually, this will probably be replaced by Clarity, uh, and I'm going to be removing the Clear of Mind Jewel that I have uh, equipped right now. Man, this is a lengthy explanation so far. And then also the, the Arcane Cloak, Arcane Surge, Increased Duration, Second Win. I mean, it's pretty much the standard Archmage, Arcane Cloak setup that you want to be uh, using. And as for gear, get life, get mana, get spell damage, get lightning damage. Uh, you want to be using a crown uh, from Awakener here. Once I'm going to have one, that's going to be super favorable. A foible is totally no mandatory. I am super questioning myself on this. Really, the only reason why I'm using it is, is because of the mana regeneration. I think a amulet with leech, with life, with mana is just super duper strong as you won't be needing nearly as much regeneration if you don't have the blood rich and you especially replace it uh, with a clarity. It should be more than enough. For right now, though, I did have one and I had the the uh whatever it's called the juice for it the catalysts so yeah i went ahead and, and used one but it absolutely not mandatory you should you should probably just use a life a life one with mana and again leech leech is super important i don't really have a good way of getting leech with this build uh while using this i could get it on a ring but it's just so hard to find an ssf uh and then yeah you want cast speed obviously so that's another really big deal when it comes to your amulet. Uh, you can get cast speed there. You can get cast speed on rings. Uh, it's super easy to ca craft cast speed rings, despite the fact that I don't have it. It's just a super fresh character. Uh, all you got to do is craft it with harvest and caster on rings guarantees uh, the cast speed. So that makes it very, very nice, especially if you're using uh, catalysts on your setup. And the same goes for amulet, except on amulet, you can get uh, spell damage as well, I believe. And yeah, you want mana, spell damage, life, mana, regen on your shield. You know, your gloves we already discussed. For the boots, I recommend three-step assault. That's what I'm using. A zero step is a possibility as well, but I currently don't have a pair. And also the 100% increased evasion rating during Onslaught is global for us. So it's just always there and it's just very effective with the Jade Flask. But spells are very dangerous. So the additional spell dodge from at zero steps would be useful. And the flat evasion is very strong as well, as it does serve a baseline for when your Jade Flask is off. And the chest piece is a little bit controversial, I suppose. I'm using a Carnal Shaper chest piece, which allows me to roll the 10% of damage taken. That of damage is taken from mana before life, resulting in uh, essentially 64% extra HP for my character with the already built-in tree MOM. You might want to use a Coco Defiance for the extra mana regen. Personally, I think this is just stronger when it comes to defense. Obviously, Coco Defiance has a lot of evasion. It has the regeneration. It has a fuckload of mana as well on it. But uh, the downside being it has no life. So yeah, with a Cloak, you're going to be doing more damage. But I personally think I prefer one of these. And your weapon is yeah, cast speed, mana, spell damage. The usual. Now, we get to the juicy part. I don't know why I'm making this into so much of a build guide, even though it's not, and telling you all these things, but let's go. Do not level with this build. Okay? Don't... I love you. Don't do it. Come to my the Twitch channel. Use your Twitch Prime, okay? I'm telling you right now, do not level with this build. I tested it. I knew it's gonna be rough. It's much rougher than you could ever think. Alright, Archmage builds generally don't really kick in until later but if you thought 
that Archmage builds aren't that great until you're like level 31, level 40 when you're leveling your Witch or your Hierophant or some kind of other bullshit class. Oh my god, is it so much worse with Raider. You do not get a damage node all the way until like level 40. Uh, obviously, you don't really even get to use the Archmage. You have to travel across the entire globe to even get to something like elemental, elemental Overload or any sort of damage increases. The only things that you really have available are mana and HP. So in that sense, leveling is very comfortable as you should be starting with Rapid Assault and then Avatar of the Chase, then Quartz Infusion, and then finally for Uber Lab, you get your Avatar of the Veil. Just level with like Caustic Arrow, get the projectile nodes, uh, level like that. I mean, lit literally just level as anything else. Lightning Trap, whatever the hell you want. It doesn't require a particularly large investment. You can get Aspect of the Eagle, you get Ballistic Mastery. Uh, you can get the bow nodes, I think, that are over here that are very useful. You can travel to acrobatics earlier on rather than traveling to all of these things. And it's going to put you very close to Hunter's Gambit, which is a massive uh, node for Caustic Arrow. And then once you're of level, which... Of level for this build really for this build really meant like level 38 when you get chain and it increases the amount of targets that you hit. Um... Which still isn't that great because Orb of Storms only hits two targets initially with the split, unless you've got an alternate quality one, in which case it increases it increases to four targets immediately. But I don't really expect you to have that. It is something that you should use if it is available to you, though. And yeah, respecting these nodes is just not a lot of cost. It's just that your build is going to kick in a little bit later if you don't do so uh, immediately. So yeah, when you really want to switch to the build. I'd say is when you equip your mana gear, if you have any gear waiting, so, you know, level 60 something, depending on how you're doing it, but it would work okay-ish from level 38, but it's still not great, you just really need the passives, so that's something that you're gonna have to figure out for yourself. Right now, I'm also using a Forbidden Taste. I'm using an Eternal Nana Flask. It's pretty much going to be mandatory. You've got your Jade Flask of Reflexes, your Quartz Flask of Staunching, and then a Quicksilver Flask of Adrenaline. Uh, you can switch these up however you want. You know, some people like the Poison Removal instead of the Forbidden Taste with a Instant Divine Flask. I really like Forbidden Taste, you know. I don't like logging out. I'm used to getting packet lost, so Forbidden Taste is a much better uh log out function where i can just exit the game instantly without uh having to risk any potential packet loss and uh it fully heals you definitely a very much underestimated flask i find uh amongst the gamers and we have a ton of regeneration threat agnostic so it's not even that we ever feel the degen despite having a pretty low amount of chaos resistance i personally have minus 15 and if i click it wow I'm not losing any life, and also, we're still regenerating mana anyway, so no reason to worry about any of that sort of deal. Yeah, that's pretty much it. If you have more questions, check out the stream. If you don't have the, the questions, then it, the, still check out the stream. Very cool. Hopefully, we're going to get to finish this build to some extent. I'm going to be able to do some real content on SSFHC and uh yeah showcase how it really does with literally any amount of effort put into the put into the build because this is pretty much just like the opener of what it could potentially be in the future yep 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 cock. <laughs>